How's it going guys? Today we're going to be going over another interview question together. Today our question again is on leak code as always. Our question is from Amazon and it's called string compression. Alright guys, before we start our video today, I just want to introduce today's sponsor, Rooftop Slushy. Rooftop Slushy is a product that offers an entire suite of services to make sure that you guys are prepared for your fang interviews. My favorite feature that they actually offer is a direct referral to these different fang companies for the average cost of $30. Trying to get an interview at these places is absolutely insane, and nowadays it's actually statistically harder to get into a place like Facebook or Google than it is Harvard. So I definitely think that the average cost of $30 is definitely fair to try and give yourself a chance at getting into fang. If you guys are interested in checking out Rooftop Slushy, you can use the link in my description for 10% off your first purchase. I hope that helps you land your job at Fang. All right guys, so today the problem is called string compression. It's being asked by Amazon right now. And our problem description says, given an array of characters, compress it in place. The length after compression must always be smaller than or equal to the original array. Every element of the array should be a character, not an int of length one. After you're done modifying the input in place, return the length of the new array. Uh, and they want us, it says as a follow-up, could you solve it using only O of one extra space? So we can't store anything in memory, right? We can only use a few different variables, basically. Uh, no real data structures to try and solve this problem. So, okay, just in a nutshell, right? We're given some string that's of length n, and we want to return a string representing the compression of it in place, such that it's smaller than the length that it was originally given. So hopping down to example one here, if we were given the array a, a, b, b, c, 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 we would return six, right? And that's because six would be the length of the newly compressed array in place. And the actual array would contain a, two, b, two, c, three. And the reason for that is because we're actually counting the occurrences of each character, right? So a appears twice, a, a. So we say, okay, that's gonna compress to a occurs twice, right? So we have the character a, and then the number of times that it occurred, and then the same thing for B, right? B occurred and it occurred twice, and then C occurred and C occurred three times. So our array after this would contain these characters in that order, and we'd return six because that's the length of the newly compressed array. In example two here, right, if we were given just a single A, we'd just output one. And the reason for that is because we tried to compress this string using the same process, right? A and then the number one, meaning that one A occurred once that would be longer, right, than the original string, so that's not a compression, so we just return one, uh, and the value would actually stay the same, right? We wouldn't do anything to the array itself. So now in example three here, if we were given the letter A, and then a ton of letter Bs, we would output four, and the reason for that is because our compression would become A. A only occurred once, right, so we're not gonna compress that, we're just gonna record A, a single A, no number of as to how many times it occurred, because that wouldn't be a compression. And then B, we would say occurred 12 times, right? So we'd have a one followed by a two. And it tells us uh, since the character A does not repeat, it is not compressed, which is why A just occurs here. And then B, 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 B occurs 12 times, right? So it's replaced by B 12. And they say, notice that each digit has its own entry in the array, right? So it wouldn't be A, B, and then the string 12, it would be A, B, one, two. Or I guess for this, for you guys, it'd really be A, B, one, two. And then just as a couple notes, it tells us that all characters have an ASCII value in the range 35 to 126 inclusive, and that the length of the characters is always between one and 1000. Okay, so now you guys seem to like the iPad idea, so I'm gonna jump back onto the iPad. We're gonna talk through the logic of how to solve this problem, and then we're gonna go back to leak code and try and code it down in our editor. All right guys, so now if we had this problem here, this is example one just being shown on the iPad now. So how would we actually go through the logic of compressing the string? Well, it's actually not that bad, right? All we really need to do is iterate through the whole string, so we're gonna have a pointer i, and then we just need to know that for every single character that we're on i, how many characters following that ith character are the same, right? So we're gonna have a character, or sorry, a pointer i, that will initially start at zero, and then we're also gonna have a pointer j that's just gonna walk forward through our string, counting how many times we see that same character, right? So j would initially point to the first day as well. It's still the same as the ith pointer, right? Or the character at the ith pointer. So we're gonna increment it and go to the next character. It's still the same. So now we're gonna go to the next character and now it's not the same, right? So now we know how many times A has occurred, right? That's just gonna be J minus I times. So that will tell us how many times it occurred. And now we just need to make sure that we place into our return array, right? A occurring this amount of times. So we'd say A and then two, right? And then all we have to do is make sure that we move i 
to be updated to that new J. So we're gonna keep doing that process. So now we get to the second B, right? J is gonna be updated as well. Now we're gonna walk through again. We're gonna find the same thing, right? J is eventually gonna to point to C. We'll put that into our array. So now we have B, two, and then we're gonna do the exact same thing, right? I is again gonna to point to this thing again too. J is gonna be updated, updated again. We reach the end of the array. So now we put into our array again, how many times we saw C, which will be C, and now J minus I will give us three. So this is what we would return, right? We have one, two, three, four, five, six elements. So we'd return six as our answer for that example. So now moving on to example two, if we were given just the example A, right? A single A, we would just have A, right? A would be our answer. That's what would be in our array. And we'd actually return one. And the reason for that is because we have I pointing to A, J would be pointing to A, right? Then we'd move J and it'd be at the end of the array. Then we do j minus i, and that would equal one, right? One minus zero is one. And so our answer would really look something like a one, but that's not what we want, right? That's not shorter than our original answer a, so we just output one here, because that's the length, right? So trying to compress this string is actually not gonna help. So we only wanna know, or we only really wanna place this occurrences here whenever j minus i is strictly greater than one. So that's something that we wanna hold on to and remember for our problem. So now if we look at example three, and this is gonna combine different things that we need to know, if this was our string, right, A, and then the letter B 12 times, we would do the same process, right? So we'd have I starting at A, J starting at A, we'd move J forward, it's not the same, right? So then we'd have J minus I, and that equals one, and that's not strictly greater than one, right? Like we said in the previous problem, so we don't wanna compress that. So, so far we would just have the letter A in our array in place at the zeroth index. Now, we're gonna see B, right? So I is gonna be one, J is gonna be one, and then we're gonna move J, right, constantly. J is gonna to move to this B, then to this B, then to this B, right, all the way to the end of the array. And now we're gonna do our arithmetic, and we're gonna do J minus I, and that's gonna give us 12. So we have A, right? We're not gonna put a one after it, because we said that it's not strictly greater than one. So it would just be A, then we'd see B, and B occurs 12 times. So we'd have to place first the one as one character, and then we'd have to place the two. So these would really be two separate strings here, right? As are all of these different characters here. So if this was our string, we'd output four, right? So now we've compressed it to this, and we're actually just gonna output the length, so we'd output four here. All right guys, so now let's start diving into our solution here on the editor, and I hope that walking through those examples on the iPad was helpful. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna keep track of an index, right? We always need to know where to place either that number or that letter that we're currently on into our character array that we have. So I'm gonna say int index equals zero, and then we also want an integer i, right? We wanna have that pointer so that we can walk through our entire string. So I'm gonna say while i is less than characters dot length, now we want our second pointer, right? We wanna have j that's initially gonna to point to i. And we said that j has to walk forward while it's equal to the character that's at the ith position. So I could say while j is less than characters.length so that we don't go out of bounds. And characters of j is equal to the character at the ith position. We just wanna increment j. Okay, great, so now once we actually have that count, right, this loop will break eventually when we reach the end of the array where the two characters aren't the same. So the first thing we wanna make sure is we record the character that we just saw, right? So I'm gonna say, okay, characters of index, and I'm gonna say plus plus so that we keep moving index forward. So we're gonna place at the index position our ith character. So I'm gonna say characters i. Now what we need to do is we need to check that if we saw that character strictly more than once, then we need to compress it, right? So if we saw like A three times, we need to make sure we say A three instead of A, 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 right? Because that would help us, that would compress the string. So we're gonna say if J minus I is strictly greater than one, then we actually have some work to do to make sure that we're effectively doing that compression. So because that's actually an integer that we have, right? J minus I is an integer, I'm just gonna turn it to a string called count and that's gonna be j minus i just appended with an empty string so it converts into a string. Now we wanna walk through every character in that count, right, because if character was two digits long or three digits long, like if, if something occurred 33 times or 105 times, we'd have to make sure that we place every character into our characters array to make sure we're compressing it correctly. So now I'm gonna say for character c in count.toCareArray, and I'm gonna say characters 
of index plus plus, again, just so that we're walking forward, equals that character C that we're on. And now really the last thing we have to make sure we do is every single time we move those pointers, right, I might be here, J has now walked all the way to here, I need to make sure that I update I to now point to J so that we start at the next character that we haven't seen. So I'm just gonna say I equals J. And then once this loop finishes, right, hopefully we've actually compressed everything and all we'll actually need to do if we did this correctly is return our index because that's gonna represent the new length of the compressed array. So now I'll just talk quickly about our runtime before we submit the solution. Well, what are we really doing? We're just gonna walk through the entire length of the characters, right? And so even though there's this nested loop and it looks kind of scary, right? It's not really doing anything that's extra work, right? We're just walking a pointer further and then we're moving this pointer to be updated to that pointer, right? So we're really only walking through the string once. So I'd say that our runtime is O of N where N is the number of characters in our string. Then in terms of our space complexity, right, we're not using an extra data structure, we're just using a couple of simple variables like this, i and j and our count. So I'd say that our, our space complexity is like they asked, o of 1. So now let's run this code, let's make sure that it works. Awesome, and it does. So guys, that's how to solve string compression in Java. Again, this question is being asked by Amazon right now. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, do me a favor and leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. And I'll see you guys next time. Alright